You've got a praise in this house. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Please, can we hold our hands? There's a shift in the atmosphere. Just hold the hands of somebody near you. I want us to pray in the spirit for three minutes. Just three minutes. We are spiritual people, so something just shifted. And you need to tap into what is already available spiritually. If you can, while you just hold the hands of your neighbor, lift your voice and pray in other tongues for three minutes. Just three minutes. There is a shift in the atmosphere. There is a shift. There is something moving in the spirit. There is something moving. There is something moving. It says a little one shall become a thousand. A small one is strong nation. I the Lord will listen to the You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise, to you our hearts we raise. And there's such a strong prophetic atmosphere in this place. I don't know if I'm supposed to preach or not. Amen. There's that lady tying black scarf. Your hair is out in the scarf. Your yes, you. Please come. The one time black scarf. And when you were when we were praying, sir, I, I saw you you held hands with him and we were, were praying. I saw a transfer of grace. And the grace that was transferred to his life are two things that the Lord told me. Number one, every yoke will be broken. Number two, it has ushered a prophetic season for certain things to happen. Okay, let me explain what it means. Many of us will not understand that. You see, when we say prophetic, one word to understand the prophetic is the word time. Prophecies don't come until God is concerned about the timing of an individual. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
prophecies don't come until God every time God is going to do something it will be in accordance to time so when I said it has ushered a prophetic season it means the time for certain things to happen has been started that's what I saw when just when you held hands and were praying with him this is the lady I was talking to all right not this one but it's okay I'll still pray for you I don't have I seen you before I, I think I've seen you in our meetings but I saw God wiping the tears of your family. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. I saw God wiping the tears of your family. Amen. I don't know. When I, I looked at you, I just saw like four people. Okay? I saw like four people with you. And then I saw a woman behind. But it looks like all these people I'm seeing, they are like your color. Yes. They are like your complexion. Yes, sir. And then the woman I saw behind is like your complexion. Yes, sir. But darker than you. Yes. Alright? What complexion is your mom? She's black. Like She's black. Yes, like sir. you. Yes. How many children does she have? Seven, sir. Seven. How many girls among the seven? Seven. Seven. All, all seven. Yes, sir. I just saw four ladies. And all of them were like her. I just saw them like and God told me. I just saw it written over you. He's wiping the tears of your family. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There's going to be a breakthrough and an open door. In less than 120 days, says the Spirit of God, there's one of your sisters. You are not the firstborn, are you? No, sir. You are not. There's one of your sisters that is going to get a major job. Amen. How many days did I say? In less than 120 days. It's going to happen miraculously. Amen. And this person I'm talking about has been applying and is not coming. Is applying, is not coming. Yes. But right now it looks like she's doing something small. Like the money is just small. It's yes. mega. Yes. It's very, I don't want to mention the amount. But in less than 120 days, I saw an open door. Miracle Amen. job. Amen. As you re- as you say amen for that, you receive it for yourself. Amen. amen. And I stretch my hands towards you and I declare the gates of the destiny of your family is open now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. It is well with you. God bless you, my dear. In Jesus' name. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down quickly. We just got started. Amen. Amen. Were we blessed by the man of God? <laughs> I whispered. Yeah. I thought you wanted to do it very well. You can celebrate that. Amen. I whispered to his ears and I told him, you are not done, sir. Amen. So let's just look at the word briefly and then we'll pray. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. How many of you are ready to pray this night? Uh, The main thing that the Lord laid on my heart was that we were going to pray today because there's going to be an advancement as far as our lives and our destinies are concerned. Now, let me tell you something. When you come for a service, it is important to believe the man of God. But it is more important to believe God first. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe the God that organized the meeting first. And honor that God by ensuring that your heart is open to receive all that God will do. Are we together now? So, I want you to believe God I want you to believe the vessel he will use, but I want you to believe God more. Because God is set to turn our lives around. There's going to be a shift for many of us. New places in destiny. In the name of Jesus. And that's the reason why we are going to take our time to pray. There are things that are facilitated by prayers. Okay? When a season has come, for certain things to begin to happen in your life 
one of the things that the Lord will do is put an urge for prophetic prayers and intercession in your spirit. And that unrest will not end until that door has been opened for you. Very, very important lesson for destiny. That there are major advancements you cannot make except you have engaged the place of prayer. You have to war into certain realities. You have to press into certain things. And like Apostle Joshua Selman said, that the price that you you will pay for where you are going to is greater than the price you paid for where you are. So if you prayed yourself into where you are, don't begin to assume you have become a spiritual giant. That's pride. Don't begin to feel you have accumulated enough that will allow you to enter where God wants you to be. Understand that the further the journey goes, the more intense you will need to apply pressure. He told Joshua in Joshua chapter 13, he said, you are now old and advanced in years. I know that. He said, but there is yet more land to conquer. And one of the things that I trust God to do tonight in this place is that God will raise warriors. People who are, who are ready not to rest until God establishes them, strengthens them, and settles them. Until God brings you into the place according to his plan and according to his purpose for your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You guys are standing a bit too close to me. Please go and go a little bit far. So that I don't swing my hand like this and hit somebody. Amen. But God bless you. First Timothy 1.18 This charge I commit to you, son Timothy. Paul is writing to his son. I preached somewhere last year. And I told them that you will notice that the language of the writings of Paul are different. The way he writes to the churches is different from the way he writes the pastoral epistles. What we call the pastoral epistles are the letters he wrote to individuals. He wrote to Titus. He wrote to Timothy. He wrote to Philemon. Isn't it? Now, when you study his writings to the churches and his writings to individuals, you will find differences. More like there were certain secrets he revealed in his writings to the individuals that were not captured in his writings to the churches. I'm, I'm going somewhere and we are going to pray shortly. So Paul is writing to his son and he's going to share heartfelt secrets. You must understand that at this point Paul has gotten to the apex of his ministry. He has gotten to the height of his ministry. So there was nothing to hide again. And he was writing from his heart. Supplying spiritual intelligence to his sons in the faith. One of them was Timothy. And the reason why Paul was particular about Timothy and Titus was because these two young individuals, they were young, but they later became bishop of churches. They became pastors that oversaw, oversaw many churches. And so Paul knew that for them to have the advantage in their young age they needed wisdom so this is an elderly apostle writing to two spiritual sons and you will read and discover that there were secrets he shared in these epistles that you will not find him write in the other ones that's why he starts by telling Paul, um, timothy this 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 very major secret he said i commit to you son timothy this charge it means it's a command non-negotiable you know you know that you are a son or a daughter when god is able to give you instructions without explanation and you carry them out not minding if he did he explained or not did you hear what i said as you journey with god the higher you rise you will discover that god will do less explanations but more instructions and if you must be great you must get used to that protocol that's why obedience is death. And being found in the fashion of men, he did what? He humbled himself in obedience, even to the death of the cross. 
So let's look at the command he's given to him. He said, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Prophecies have been given over your life. You have had dreams. You have had visions. Bro Joseph, you're welcome. And happy birthday to you. God bless you. You have had visions, dreams. God has shown you many things. Men of God have prophesied over you. Laid hands on you. You have received a lot of impartation through words. And now Paul is telling Timothy, he says, If you want all those things to materialize, if you want them to translate from the spiritual into the physical, because listen, the Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But the thing is, they are in heavenly places. You don't need them here. There. You need it to manifest here. You don't want to go to heaven and see the blessings that you didn't tap into while on earth. Is that true? So there has to be a system that translates those spiritual resources and make it tangible enough for you to prosecute destiny. And Paul says, if you want to see a reality of such, he says that you must hold those prophecies and with them war a good warfare wage a good warfare in other words you must be on the offense you have to be intentional you have to be deliberate it's going to be an act of your will it's not god it's not left to god again it's not left to another man of god you know there are some people <laughs> they need one man of god to prophesy to them and they need another man of god to pray them into those things it doesn't work like that my father in the Lord told me, son, he told me what Apostle Selman told him. He said, son, there are some wells. By wells, it means spiritual resources in form of grace. You understand? He said, there are some wells that you have to dig for yourself. There are those you can receive by impartation. There are those you can receive through applying the principles of the word of God. But there are some that you have, you yourself, it will be by your personal pressing into God. By your ability to take advantage of the forceful nature of the kingdom. He said from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. The word suffered means allows, permits. It didn't mean that the kingdom of God is suffering in the hands of men, no. It means that the way the kingdom operates is that it can allow men to by force create their place or step into their place of ordination in the kingdom. That's why when Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, he said that the kingdom of God is at hand. What it means is, you know somebody riding a bike, like a, you know, a motorcycle, the, the throttle is always here. So when he says the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand, the word at hand there, yeah, the original meaning in Greek is illustrated by a throttle. So if you need the, the bike to move faster, what do you do? You keep accelerating. So when he says the kingdom of God is at hand, it means that your access, your participation in the kingdom is going to be based on your will. The power is available, but it's going to be how hungry you are. It's going to be how determined you are. How desperate you are to lay hold of it. That's the reason why one of the weapons that the enemy has launched against the church is laziness. I believe laziness is a spirit. I believe it. Not just physical laziness. Particularly, you know, we are in northern Nigeria. With all due respect, one of our strongholds in northern Nigeria is laziness. An average northerner is lazy in almost everything. With all due respect. You know, we, we just finished a series on warfare. Somebody must do this for them. Somebody must do that for them. Even to write a CV, somebody must write for them. Somebody must read and study for them. Somebody must do... You go to our schools around here. The teacher has to learn how to interpret what she, he or she is saying in Hausa. Yes or no? Yes. What, what, what does that show you? Laziness. Anyone that comes from this territory, it is a natural deformity in your bloodline. So, 
the day you gave your life to Christ and came into the kingdom that's one of the things you must battle because you will notice that as you move towards destiny there is this thing that keeps drawing you back you say that my, with them you may wage a good warfare it's natural a northerner doesn't like expansion doesn't like enlargement when he was talking about 10 people that God will raise we'll talk about that later I will tell you what you will do to enter there if you are interested So, you just know that if you don't take action, certain things will not come into fulfillment. Yes, God said it. But remember, your word, O Lord, is settled where? In heaven, not on earth. It's in heaven that is the Lord. On earth is not yet the Lord. The earth is his own, oh, the earth is the Lord. But it takes the church to establish that dominion on earth. And so, every time you entered into a place in destiny, anytime you made a major advancement, I submit to you, whether you knew it or not, a warfare was conducted. Either you fought certain battles, spiritually, physically, or mentally, or financially, because sometimes you can fight the battle with your seed. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head. Okay. It's not all the battles you fight with your prayer. Most of you have heard, uh, uh, you know, this man of God, Apostle Arome Osai. The accident he had this year. They prayed, 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 and their prayer was not moving it. And then God spoke to him and said, Send so so amount to your father in law. When he sent the money, God now reminded him of the scripture Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be what? Long. Because there was an onslaught of the enemy projected towards him. So, it's either you fought the battles or somebody fought on your behalf and you called it luck. You know, there are many people like that. Say, I was just there or they called me for the interview and the same day I started the job. It didn't just happen like that. Something happened behind whether you knew it or not but it is more dangerous when you don't know because someday in the in the journey of destiny you will need to fight that battle yourself you will need to fight it yourself every time i return back to massacre and meet my spiritual father he will say hi it's ministry over there i say ah, it's not easy he say don't worry encourage me he say go back and refire and I remember in 2018, when we just started, it was it was it was really difficult. God was doing great things in our midst. Now you see, the <laughs> ah, you can be anointed, but be limited. Let me tell you, just because you can heal the sick and you can perform one or two miracles, Satan can allow you to do that. And he will tell himself, well, you can stay in your small cycle, but I'm in charge in this territory. And I'll make sure you remain there. And your voice is not heard. And God bless you that your mind has been blinded by the prince of this world. You will be there in your small hole, celebrating yourself. Till the message of God comes and God gives you a view of where you are supposed to be. And you realize that you have been a big fish in a small river. And so I noticed that, yes, you know, we were having supernatural experiences in our midst. He knew. That time there was no sound like this. We used to meet in a parlor. And all these things you see happening here will happen there. Then, I don't know, now, not like then. I, then I think I moved more in the prophetic, not now. Maybe because I'm shy. But we remained in one place. And I knew that this is not what God wanted. Because God spoke to me about the territory. And then I began to engage prayers and study the word. And I discovered there is a warfare dimension to entering into destiny. When I started to pray, that's when I discovered I had not been doing anything. Do you notice that any time 
you begin to press into God or make major spiritual advancement that's when every negative challenge will come on you the first that that means number one that you are beginning to make advancement so before that time you were playing you were joking every time you are about to step into another place or you become serious with god and begin to press into god and you know go for <laughs> there are certain people that will fast and satan has no business with them there are some that will fast and satan will go and look for them jesus entered the wilderness of 40 days satan said no what kind of fast is this no food and what kind of prayer is this we need to do something against the I, I must fast with this man to see the end of it that's the reason why after the 40 days the first person he saw was who satan every time you will make major advancement it's like the arsenals of hell will be launched against you second timothy chapter 4 so destiny is not without a fight that's why it's called breakthrough 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 it was a force that was exerted second timothy 4 verse 6 and verse 7 he said for i am already being poured out this is at the end of his journey on earth paul was soon to be executed he said for i'm already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand next verse i have fought what the good fight i have finished the race i have done what kept the faith that was the summary of his life let's read it again i have done what fought the good fight next i have finished the race the third one i have that was a summary of destiny three things i fought i finished i kept that means that one third of the christian life is spiritual warfare you hear it, you catch it when you get home it's written there and as a matter of fact that's the first thing he said i have fought i told you last week i said where you are now in life believe it or not but i tell you as someone who is who has had a little bit of experience in spiritual warfare and i tell you as a man of god where you are in life is as a result of many battles that you have either fought and won or fought and endured are you hearing what i'm telling you so if you are not satisfied with where you are it means you either endured a little or you fought a little to say he that endures to the end shall be what saved and this night we are going to pray some major prayers there must be a shift as far as your life and destiny is concerned after this night you didn't hear what i said i said after this night there must be a notable shift in your life in your ministry in your destiny there must be there must be there must be the bible says he crowns the year with his goodness and he causes the parts to drip with fatness he said the end of a matter is better than the beginning though thy beginning was small yet your latter end shall greatly increase and this is the end of the year that we are in and i i am persuaded without doubt that where you are was not is not where god determined that you will finish the year the, the end of the year with like it or not he said you are old and advanced in years but there is still more land to conquer some of you god didn't want you to enter into your financial millionaire status next year it was supposed to happen this year but you notice that every time you set you, you decide to start a business everything fights you the first time you started something happened to the money the next time you started the press the people to help you were not there okay you managed again the third time and now you follow the debtors to eat the entire business and you are wondering what the problem is i have fought a good fight you've not waged war enough you've not handled the war that is behind that venture in the spirit realm let me show you something about jesus i think it's in luke chapter 8 the story of jesus and the madman of gadara 
but before when he was you know in the sheep the storm the bible says jesus told the disciples when evening had come he said let us go to the other side and as soon as they entered the boat to advance to the other side there was a storm that's what the bible says when he was in this other path nothing happened there was no earthquake there was no wind nothing happened but the moment he said let us cross over to the other side now listen jesus himself jesus himself made a statement when he met the woman whose daughter was possessed the syrophoenician woman when he met the woman and the woman besieged him to heal her daughter jesus said i'm sent only to the lost sheep of israel that means my territory of ministry is only in israel i can't go out of israel i can't go out of the jewish settlement so this advancement that jesus was going to make he was about to leave judea into another place he was about to shift territories and this, the devil said no we are okay with you just staying in one place but you going global no way you remain in this meduguri and can i tell you how the devil deceives many people allow you to buy one car rent a house of four hundred thousand, and you are your salary is four hundred thousand every month the devil will now make you think that is the big picture and then you cross your leg and remain there meanwhile that was only supposed to be a test point for the millionaire realm who told you god wanted to give you cars because of yourself alone no who told you god wanted to give you finances because of yourself alone no and so we will keep you keep camping there until the day you decide i must break through from this place and advance all hell will break loose at you the bible says there was a storm and water began to enter the booth and we know the story the bible says when they called on jesus he stood up and here's jesus very wise according to luke's account i don't know if you can find it in the media i think it's luke chapter 8 or so the bible says he rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea he rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea look at this the sea is water is physical you can see it but the wind is invisible you can't see it that's the supernatural dimension the first thing jesus attacked was the spirit behind that opposition it was not the storm jesus faced it was the wind that caused the storm so when people begin to rise against you that's what the psalmist says he said many are they that trouble me three kinds of adverse adversaries you will find on your path to destiny three kinds of human adversaries you'll find he said many are they that be that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many are they that say of me there is no help for him in god three kinds of adversaries you will face the first one are those who will do anything to make sure you are not comfortable they will trouble you why are you going to church and coming back late but if you came back from an, a hospital there's no problem you came back from a hospital by 10 no problem but you came back from church seven o'clock they say this your church is too much and they are brethren they are christians they go to church of the brethren so they are they are brethren square what did david said in one of the psalms he said but it was you my brother i think that's psalms 55 don't go there he was talking about the reproach and the adversary against his life he said i thought it was somebody else or a hidden he said but it was you my brother who ate with me and we sat down together in the house of god so most times he will stir up the trouble from within around you <laughs> and if you don't know how to conquer the troubles around you first you know because family opposition is what you deal with first you heard him give the story i came from a family you know of saints in the name of jesus christ father is a pastor grandfather is a pastor is dead now 106 i believe sir all siblings all of us are christians tongue talking you know but in 2013 in august we were finishing a fast that month and for the first time the lord spoke to me I remember very clearly that evening he told me i could hear from my right ear 
He said, I want you to continue the fast because I want to talk to you. Prior to that time, I had not fasted that long. Continue fast after 31 days. So I told my dad, told one or two persons, they said, okay, continue. And then I started to fast. And I realized that time, then he was not around. Then he was not around, it was my sister's. I, I, I realized that time, anytime I pass them in the parlor where they are, they begin to, they are gossiping me. They say, this is our brother, no well, though. which kind fast be this one? Say, now you fast pass. This is them talking. I'm just eavesdropping. Say, now wow. I remember that time my mom would come and check me where I was praying. The children hall. Because if I stayed in the house to pray, I would sleep. So I needed to go somewhere uncomfortable. The reason why you are where you are, mainly sometimes, can be maybe you are too comfortable. It's time to break camp and advance. So God will expose some level of adversity and you make you uncomfortable. Why? Because this is not where I have for you. He said, a little one shall become a thousand. A small one. A strong nation. You've got to expand. But how do I make you expand when you're already comfortable with this point? So send some adversaries around him. Get those that will trouble him. Many are they that trouble me. They said all kinds of things. After them, people from outside. But that time I was a madman. And I didn't know why I was fasting. But I just know that's when I knew the scripture says the spirit driveth him. Not the kind of fast you say I will end by so so day. And then two days to that day, you now say, Apostle say, if your body they disturb you when they fast, break the fast. So let me. And it's because they have been frying egg and chips for the for the last five days. Every morning you pass there and the smell will come into your nose. At the fifth day, you say, No, 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 no. Apostle say, if your body they do you. And that was when God began to show. And you know, God, God didn't show me the full picture. It would just be one encounter and then allow me to press. Another encounter and allow me to press till I got to November 4th, 2013. From August 1. That was when he showed me the vision of Meduguri. That was when he told me details. So I'm not confused. I will send you there and I will use you as a pivotal for my revival that will break forth from there to the nations of the earth. He said, because that place has been known for desolation, for war, but I will soon make it known for revival. He said, but when you are done there, because that is training on assignment, when you are done, then I will take you from there and release you to the nations. So I'm not confused. I know what I'm doing. So, and that, that opened me I began to love that kind of prayer escapade with God pursuing, pursuing, pursuing pursuing, pursuing 2016 he came again I remembered my birthday that time and I knew there was this unrest in my spirit God, God wanted to tell me something and that word would shift me to the next place and so I decided this birthday I will celebrate it in a different way so I said okay the birthday is on the 5th the first four days before fifth, no food. I'll talk to God. Maybe God is not talking to me enough because I've been eating food. I want to try it and see. Brothers and sisters, it was not easy. Oh. Let me tell you. There are times when I'll be lying down to pray. It's as if the ceiling is the ground. The ground is the ceiling. But I remained there. There was, there was something in my spirit. I knew I needed to catch with God. That was when the name Sons of Glory Network came. Expressly. When did it come? 2016. When did we start? 2018. Because if you need direction in life, you need to be close to the voice of God. And I believe in prophets, but there are times in destiny where you have to hear the voice of God. He said, you shall hear the voice behind you that says, this is the way. There are things prophets cannot hear from you. For we see in part and we prophesy in part. And I continued on that fast, continued praying night and day, praying night and day. 
and on the fourth day, 4th of February, 4 a.m. in the morning, was still dark. That children hall. Yes, yeah, sir. That was the first time I heard the voice of God. You see, when the Bible says the voice of God is like many waters, brothers and sisters, it is true. And I can tell you something. The audible voice of God, if you have been praying to hear it, stop praying. Let me advise you. I don't know why people are afraid of the devil. If you really encounter God, you will be more afraid. That's why when angels appeared to people in the Bible, the first thing they said was what? Fear not. You've not just encountered God. That's why you see me stand here and, and shout anyhow against witchcraft, against demon, and I'll keep shouting, you know, <laughs> till when God begins to send us to the nations. As long as we are here, we'll pound those demons till they run away. I know they are hearing me. I'm still here. We are, we are here. I'm talking about a voice that will shake everything inside of you and around you. I'm talking about a voice that every part of you will hear. You know, when I talk to you, you hear me from your ears. But when God speaks to you with his audible voice, every part of you will hear it. I say it by, by encounter. And what did he say? He said, you are a light. And then a scripture flashed, I remember, in that vision. That was the first time God would show me scriptures in vision. So I got out of praying. I went to the Bible. I discovered it was Isaiah 42, verse 6 and 7. And that became my definition in ministry. In the days when I was troubled with depression, in the days when I was troubled by the enemy, trying to compare myself with others, I go back and read that scripture because that's my trademark. That's who I am. Take me to Nijar and leave me there. That's who I am. I believe it. And by the way, take me to Nijar. I just give me a little time. Everything you see happening here will happen there. Because when you walk with God, it's something that by the help of God you can replicate anywhere. You must fight. You must fight. You must fight. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And all of a sudden, storm rose up against him. But the Bible says he rebuked the wind. And the storm was calm. And as soon as they got to the other side, first person to welcome Jesus at the airport, in this, you know, you know, in this context, a seaport. You know, when a guest is coming from, a, from another place, you send protocols, you send all kinds of people, red carpet reception. The red carpet reception was Jesus was a man filled with demons. And then Jesus knew why he was sent there. So let me tell you the truth. Every time you try to advance in God and you are met with oppositions, it's a sign that you are, you are on the right track. And it's a sign that you must fire back. There are times where God told me, he said there are times where you must raise an opposition against the opposition. There are times where you must raise adversity against the adversary. There are times where you have to arise and determine to face the adversary until one person goes down and it must not be you. I hope you, that, you know that the Bible says the Lord is a man of war. The God, the Lord of hosts is his name. God is a God of war. He fights. There is that warfare dimension of God. And there are points in destiny. There are points in your calling. Where that dimension will be stirred up inside of you. And you know that until you do something, nothing happens. If you don't have many of such moments in your life, check where you are. When I began to press into God, I noticed that anytime I begin to hit a point spiritually, sickness will come sickness will come i said what kind of thing is this then 2015 i was operated then 2019 operated two times i say ah, ah. but unknown to me that was the battle for someone who will become a mighty healing voice because sometimes the things you go through they are they have been carefully planned they have been carefully you know ex, you know put around your life to simulate your destination where you are going to god took them through the wilderness through serpents and scorpions through all kinds of harsh conditions you know why because there were giants in the land they were going to 
I'm sending you to a land filled with milk and honey. That's what he told them when they were in Egypt. They came out. When they now got close to the promised land, that's where God now came and said, eh, this land, eh, there are Canaanites there. There are Jebusites. There are Je <laughs> Because if God tells you the demons you have to fight to stand and fulfill the calling of God, you will run. From being a prophet, as you run and go and do beauty, what, the, what I want to do pageantry. <laughs> Say, no, God, this is the can, can we do something else? If God says you'll be a prophetess, I, can I tell you something? You see, Apostle Selman said something very, very profound. He said, There are spirits that follow callings, there are spirits that follow offices. When you call yourself an apostle, I hope you have determine the opposition that are coming against you because i see a lot of young people now apostle 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 thank you it's okay it's okay but go and weigh the cost first go and check the people you are he said no king going in battle against another king that has more numbers than him that will not first send a peace a peaceful delegation to resolve the matter because he knows this guy is more than me. You say you are an apostle, get ready because governments and systems will fight you. Because the apostolic office is a governmental office. It's an office that is saddled with government, authority. An apostle will not come to a place and we are all just small there. No, you see him begin to, we must, we must have a say here. We must have a right here. That's the reason why some of you feel I'm harsh sometimes. It's not like that too, it's a spirit. You minister powerfully and i'll just look at you no it's the spirit it doesn't allow me to it doesn't allow until there is total dominion exerted you call yourself a prophet thank you i hope you know that the spirit against prophets in the bible is jezebel okay so god knows that if he had told you you'll be a prophetess to nations you will go and wait and say but apostle say now jezebel they fight prophets and the last time Jezebel fought a prophet Elijah, what did she say? He said, by this time tomorrow, your head. <laughs> he said, me, a prophetess. No, 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 God, can we do another thing? I want to be a mass communicator. God said, a lie. Go and pray. You are a prophet to nations. So that's why he lure you through music. He lure you through drama. You were acting drama in church. And you were enjoying it, enjoying it. He was just luring you. Then you begin to see yourself in your dream preaching to people. You say, No, no, no. I, I'm a singer. Why am I preaching? That's how it started for me. Oh. I forgot at a time that there were prophecies before I was born. I forgot. I grew up as a young man and I wanted the things of this life. I wanted to jive and groove and all of that. If I had plans to leave dreads, say amen. You know, I looked at myself one day. I saw that I was fair. I said, Ah, if I leave dreads and oil it well. That was my plan, so. And I started keeping up with the plans. He knows. I used to leave here that time. I started keeping up with the plans. And God said, this, this amount of flesh in you. <laughs> I forgot that they say you will, be, you will be a man of God. You will be a pro I forgot all those things. I said, no, I'll be a music producer. Let me produce do beats for people and all of that. Are we ready to pray? Because I'm done with my message. And God said, okay, go to the studio, keep producing. And one day there was a change. By myself, all those ambitions, I threw it away. And said, God, will press to the death till I see what is written about me. Brothers and sisters, all I came to tell you tonight is until you engage the warfare dimensions, there are certain levels of victories you cannot see. There are certain powers, controlling powers, that you cannot rise above in the sphere that God has placed you, in the territory that God has placed you, until you engage certain levels of battles, until you pray certain prayers. There are some doors that will not open. Until you begin to engage certain forces in the supernatural. There are some things that will not shift. Let me tell you something about finance. If it is kingdom wealth you want, there is a point you will get to where you realize this thing is mainly about warfare.
there is a contention every time you rise you are to rise to another level financially you will experience some level of storms around you 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 to you you think somebody stole your money or you gave and you didn't see it as a matter of fact one day god showed me in the scripture that there is a demon spirit in charge of eating people's seed i was contending for financial prosperity i had sown seed nothing happened and i began to pray and god showed me leviticus 26 if i have time i'll show you today he said there is a spirit that there are certain levels of sacrifices you make to provoke some things that the enemy may try to go and hijack in the realm of the spirit because the last i checked satan is a spirit too that's why i told cornelius your prayer and your arms giving it's not only giving he said deal with that spirit There was a time recent you know not too not too long ago that i prayed a prayer to god and i told god here's what i told god i told god i said there is an anointing i want on my life that every time i open my mouth over people the gates of their destiny will open up god say you want that kind of anointing is available but are you ready to press for it i can't tell you the degree of prayers i had to do i can't tell you and now it has come to the point where you send text messages to people and doors open for them but you then there are prizes you must pay there is a level of pressure you must exact to get to that point are we ready to pray this night if all we do this night is pray and leave this place with a note and a confirmation of victory then i think we have achieved enough many of you are meant to be in a particular place in life and destiny but you are not there yet not because god doesn't want you to be there but you have not pressed enough he said you have not yet resisted unto bloodshed is that so it's written in your bible and jesus resisted like that too one time he prayed till his sweat became blood Isaiah chapter 53 tells us, he says, He shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. Because when Jesus died, he still went down to hell to fight more battles. He didn't just become Lord of glory anyhow. No. So there are, there are levels of prayer. There are seasons. You will know when that season comes on your life. God will not allow some kind of gallivanting around you. You know that you need to keep a, a red eye until the red becomes green for your destiny to open up that's how we prayed one time when god showed me you remember the vision i always share about the spirits i saw on these our gates here now listen to me one of the things that god showed, told me recently about those spirits is that they are heavily responsible for poverty in the land i said god is there poverty in this land he said there is poverty a lot than you can see but the good news is there is also wealth but the wealth of the land has not been tapped into yet and there's something i'm, I'm careful not to say here because if i say it here some of you will go and resign from your job and he told this is what he told me see if you remove international NGOs from this city if you take away the humanitarian sector from this city all you have left is government work yes or no and business people and check very well when it comes to business in this town there are few that prosper and rise to a point of territorial influence check very well many people can be selling bread but there are few that will stand out except you are supported by a supernatural force and god said deal with that that's how we began to pray we began to pray you remember those nights we will we'll meet there pray 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 all through when i go back home i continue that's the time when you pray more than you sleep 
because until these gates open there is no movement from here if jesus had kept quiet in the midst of that storm it would have swallowed them up and they would have perished there and his destiny was the cross do you know that some attacks on your health is an attack on your destiny the devil says kill him there before he rises to become the next apostle kill him there before they promote him and make him the bank manager you were deputy director nothing happened now that you know you are close to becoming director all of a sudden stroke came bam and for six months you are with that stroke it's not ordinary there are gates controlling powers they see that you are about to step into the limelight and they will do everything possible to keep you down but all oh, that a warrior will arise this night and declare war against the arsenals of hell and mount pressure against the gates of hell until it opens up he says a great and effectual door is open to me but there are many adversaries and guess what the more the adversaries the greater the possibilities involved so it is yours for the taking if you are ready to contend you will lay hold god told them he said i have given you this day sihon the amorite and all the king of bashan and their lands begin to possess it. deuteronomy 2 24 he said begin to possess it contending with him in battle and the, and the house of jacob shall possess not claim possession is a warfare term there are spirits you will fight the wealth in your family somebody needs to catch it but there are spirits to, to bring down there are strong men that you must bring down he says strong man guards his house and keeps his good safe except the stronger than he comes and binds him and takes his armor from him then he spoils the goods of his house if you are ready then you will see victories if you are ready then you will taste victory you will know that satan too can flee you will know that spirits too can bow let me tell you something i am a close cabrantilla as powerful as those spirits are they know that the earth has it given to the sons of men if a man arises that's why this warfare has not ended in my life oh warfare in fact what god is showing me for next year can i tell you something next year is going to be a great year it's going to be a great year it's going to be so great there will be never a year in nigerian's history like that year yes let me tell you i'm telling you from intelligence received listen i'm telling you and those who think that nigeria will be divided by the elections no we will survive and go past that place many of us are going to be giants next year i'm telling you however the battles that are in next year the kind of demons that are in next year i've not seen such before i'm telling you so if you are a lackadaisic a lackadaisic christian do it anyhow go to church on time and live on my own time if that if you are that kind of christian you may be swallowed up next year with what i'm seeing that's why i started the prayers for next year since july oh yes because esther was to stand just one night before the king but what was the preparation for one night 12 months of rubbing oil you don't prepare for next year in december you prepare for next year in the middle of the year there are giants next year is going to be possessing the land of canaan for many of us but there are giants to conquer paul said i have fought a good fight i have finished the race and i've kept the faith he said fight the good fight of faith by laying hold the word lay hold means to seize it it means that the devil is trying to take it away from you but you must hijack it you must seize it you must seize the wealth of your family you must seize the identity of your destiny some of you have been around many people who don't know who you really are in christ they don't know who god has designed you to be and so the fam over familiarity around you has even made you forget who god has made you to be and next year will be the time where you have to break away from there and begin to make major advancements towards destiny next year many of you will need to you will need to war to enter into some places 
and if you are ready this night we are going to pray and any gate that has refused to open for you there's no need for you to open again we don't need the key we will break it like something are you hearing what i'm saying we're about to pray now they lock the gates say in the morning we'll catch something and kill him the bible says something late till midnight and at midnight he stood up he says the gate you locked right? okay there are many ways to go out of the city he went and he took the gate and carried it on his shoulder can i tell you something that was prophecy because gates represent authorities in the spirit Samson was prophesying his last victory before he died because the bible says the day he died they put him in the in a temple and the whole temple was filled and all the lords of the philistines were in that house lords means authority no be so and that day Samson brought all his enemies down so that action he performed was a prophecy unknown to him that a day will come where I will sabotage the entire authorities of the Philistine nation. What was it about the Philistines that every generation of Israel of Israelites kept fighting them? You will see in the time of Samuel, they rose up. In the time of Saul, they rose up. Then God said, I need to look for a man who will sit as a warrior. And he looked for David. And David prophesied in 2 Samuel 5, 21, 20, 21. He said, For the Lord has broken through my enemies like a break of water. And that was the final victory over the Philistine nation. This night, if you pray, there are things that will shift around your life and you will know that breakthrough is cheap. You will know that destiny is something you can get into with speed. You will know that God can compress time and give to you in one day what you lost in one year. If only you are ready to pray. Stand on your feet. We are going to pray this night. Listen. God told me something. He said the end time is a time of warfare. And he said, we will need to separate between the soldiers and the warriors in the time of battle. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, because every warrior is a soldier who has learned the art of warfare. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? There are some soldiers they don't take for war. At best, they can be communicators. They can even be teachers in classroom. There are some that they call infantry soldiers. They are trained for war. They can fire all kinds of guns. They can survive in the bush. They can go for days without food until the enemy is brought down. Anytime Nigeria's insecurity, uh, you know, security system is threatened, they will send special forces. You see those ones, they wear black, isn't it? When they go to a place, they can just level that place. Now you have to be a warrior like that for you to enter into a mega-sized destiny those spirits telling you in your ears that you will die you will die you need to fight that voice and declare that i shall not die but live to declare the works of god why die when there is a healing anointing inside of you you see let me tell you something most of the limitations you face is actually a sign of the blessings that god is investing in you to reach out to others if you are always broke maybe you are going to be a financial giant if you are always sick maybe you are going to be a healer but you need to you need to come to a point where you say enough is enough how long will i live on drugs are you ready to pray this night can you do something for me find a partner just two two just two two when you hold that person i pray that person is a person that came to pray this night open your mouth in the next two minutes and blast in other tongues now. Together we confront the gates that has opposed our destiny. We confront the gates that has resisted our answers. Together we confront the gates that has resisted our advancement. Everything that has tried to stop you, 
expand as we speak to you. We become more against the atmosphere. Together, we declare that it is time. So Listen to me. God is telling me something. Just believe what I'm telling you. We are going to confront demonic spiritual hijackers. That's what the Lord just told me in my ear. Listen. There are spirits whose assignment is only to hijack any opportunity that is coming your way. They keep your life on surveillance. Anytime a mega opportunity or a mega sized blessing is coming, they are specialized in hijacking it that if you ever see it, it was in the dream. You will never see it manifest. That's the spirit of Herod. Moses was born. Herod said, kill all the, all, all the Jewish born male. He came again in Pharaoh. He, he, sorry, that was Pharaoh. He came again in Herod when Jesus was born. They are hijackers. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I confront. I confront every spiritual hijacker. Every spiritual hijacker of opportunities. Of opportunities. Blessings. Blessings. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That I deserve. That I deserve. Whether in my health. Whether in my health. In my family. In my family. In my calling. In my calling. In my destiny. In my destiny. In my career. In my career. I arrest those hijackers. I arrest those hijackers. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and confront them, arrest them, 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 Psalms 107 verse 16 Psalms 107 verse 16 This night eh, we are going to break some gates Everything that has stood as an opposition Between you is a barricade, is a barrier Between you and the place that God has designed for you We are breaking it open this night He said you have dwelt too long on this mountain For he has broken 
the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. King James said he has cut in the bars of iron asunder. Lift your voice after me, say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every strong gate. Every strong gate. Standing between me. Standing between me. And my breakthrough. And my breakthrough. Between me. Between me. And destiny. And destiny. Between me. Between me. And my fulfillment. And my fulfillment. Be broken now. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Let the cup be Listen to me. Can I share a testimony with you and then we'll pray. Last prayer and after that prayer we are going to collect the prayer points and that we are going to thunder prayers on it. God will answer. On Wednesday night I woke up to pray. This is witchcraft in operation. Somehow the spirit of God moved me to set my alarm by 11.45. As though there were things God needed to arrest that night. I don't know this woman standing behind Pastor Henry. Yes, Yuma, Yuma. I just saw, just stand there. I saw an angel standing by you, waving a flag, and on it is written breakthrough. That's what I saw. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands towards you. Every force from your background that has fought your breakthrough for you and your family, I command those forces and gates to be lifted. I command it to be lifted. And I declare the anointing for the next level. Step into it now. In the name of Jesus. Listen. 11.45, I woke up. Somehow by 11.58, I stood up to pray. I will try to just cut the story short. I noticed as I started praying, it was like sleep was coming on me. I couldn't explain it. I had slept about an hour or 30, an hour, 30 minutes before that time. Sleep came on me. <laughs> then I stood up. I said, no. You know, in the night, let me teach you how to pray in the night. Those of you that struggle to pray in the night, let me, if you truly want to pray, there are some nights I know I just want to sleep, so I go and sleep. Amen. But you know, you arrest the powers before you go and sleep. If you want to pray in the night, don't sing worship song. Huh? You're not a man. No, don't, don't try it. Go in tongues. Are you hearing me? I 
I stood up and began to blast in tongues. And then at one point when I sat down, this was between 12 to 1. When I sat down, I knew that this was the operation of witchcraft. And the Spirit of God told me to open my eyes. I looked through my window. I saw the moon. Those of you who were awake that night, the moon was almost the full moon. It was shining very bright. And by discernment, I knew that those who were into astrology were walking that night. Sourcing powers from the moon and the heavenly bodies. There are different levels of operation too. And then I began to pray. The prayer, I will teach you to pray the prayer now. By 12.59, unknown to me, the Spirit of God told me, look at your window again. When I looked, the moon had disappeared. So between 12 to 12.59, that one hour was the window that they had to cause all kind of satanic downturns and operations. But they needed to be a watchman and a, pray, a man of prayer to stand and resist it. Jesus told them, he said, but this is your time, your hour, and the power of darkness. The prayer we are going to pray is against every satanic programming projected in your life to cause stagnation, to cause cycles, to cause delay. You can get close to, but you can't enter into it. It's called a programming. For some of you, the programming is in form of sleep. When you are close to a mega-sized breakthrough, just to pray for at least seven nights, sleep will hit you for the whole of those seven days. You will sleep and not even know how come you could sleep this much. It's a programming. We are going to deal with those programmings this night. Some of you, there are programmings on your finances. It has been set and it has been working for 10 years. It's a program. When there are cycles happening in your life that you cannot explain, you, are care you should be careful because you may be dealing with programmings. Programmings. But every demonic program this night will be deactivated. Amen. I said it will be deactivated. Amen. Can you raise your right hand up? Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I deactivate. I deactivate satanic programming. Satanic programming. Over my life. Over my life. Over my destiny. Over my destiny. Over my calling. Over my calling. Over my finance. Over my finance. Over my business. Over my business. Over my career. Over my career. I deactivate. I deactivate. I deactivate. I deactivate. I destroy. I destroy satanic programming. Satanic programming. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. That's the last prayer of the night. Who's like Please ushers help us pass the offering basket round. Let's use the offering basket. Get your prayer request while we are standing. Get your prayer request. Please get it. If you have not written it, you just have about a minute to just write. Get your prayer request ready. We are going to pass it round uh, to the usher at the end of your row. 
and it will be collated we are going to lift up prayers over those requests listen the lord just showed me a vision now i saw god sparing a family from car accident yes i just saw that i said car not boss the car i saw is a lemon green car that's what i saw like lemon is it lemon or mint green this kind of light green right i just saw that and i saw god sparing them from accident and in the name of jesus we stand upon this altar by the authority in that name to cancel every program of accident over your life over your loved ones any demonic programming of accident whether it has been sealed and concluded waiting to happen we avert it now i say we avert it now in the name of jesus i'm still praying against accident what i'm seeing now is walk accident walk accident you are walking and then something fall something fell on somebody that's just what i saw all of you are into you are into one skill or the other one hand work or the other you are a workman i pray for you in the name of jesus christ every accident programmed against you between now and the end of this year we cancel it now by the blood of the lamb we cancel it now in the name of jesus christ we cancel it now Amen. we cancel it now Amen. in the name of jesus ushers please help us collect the request quickly just the usher stands at the aisle and then you pass the request down to the usher and then we collect it together and we are going to pray on it we are going to pray on it we are going to pray on it please i'd like to invite um Bishop, please come. Pastor, um, Pastor Meliflos, please come. Please celebrate Pastor Meliflos as he comes. And just so that we can, so that we don't crowd this place, that's the reason why. Just come. So in, we are going to represent the ministers and we are going to pray. Okay, I, don't, I just don't want us to crowd this place. So we are going to represent the ministers and we are going to agree together and pray on it. I saw supernatural answers being released. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. Yesterday I shared a testimony at the sisters conference about a young man who met me two weeks ago. And I looked at him by the spirit. I asked him, I said, have you, have you been on a course abroad as, a, as an officer? He said, no. Uh, the best I've gone to is chat. Prayed and declared over him, Joseph is here. You are a witness. You came with him yesterday. He has been nominated to go abroad for a course two weeks ago listen and when he showed me his name was the last on the list you were there sir in fact what brought and this is how you know the favor of god is activating a new season for a man what brought his name on that list was that the last person on the list wrote his own number instead of the person's number in other words i'm supposed to write my number i'm the last person but i wrote his number and wrote my name anybody that must controversial prayer anybody that must make a mistake for you to be faithful i command you to be saved i know you don't like that prayer but i command you to be saved listen don't say it's not scriptural the bible says the wine butler isn't it when he left the prison joseph said remember me when you get to the palace he left the prison and forgot about moses uh, about joseph but can i tell you something he, i don't think he really forgot if he had spoken to pharaoh about joseph the instant he left the prison the best they would have done was okay we apologize for having you jailed for the wrong thing so we are sorry we'll give you holiday or be compensated later you go back and resume your work as a slave that's why you must not try to force certain breakthroughs until it's time there are people that god wants you to meet but there is a time allocated to your meeting them wait till that time don't try to force your way don't try to lobby your way wait the bible says two years later pharaoh had a dream 
Nobody could interpret the dream. And what did the butler say? He said, I remember now my mistake. Anybody that must make a mistake for your rise in this season, I command it to be so. I said, I command it to be so. In the name of Jesus Christ. wrote his name and wrote the number of this one because thou shalt arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time let's go ah let me prophesy that prayer again on your life any human agent or any human system that must be compromised or that must make a mistake for your lifting i declare it to be so in the name of jesus I speak by this prophetic and apostolic unction in the next 30 days any system or human being that must make a mistake for you to be remembered for you to rise for you to be lifted for you to be favored in the next 30 days i command you to be slow in the name of jesus christ believe it to please bring the prayer request quickly I want you to stretch your hands we just have two minutes to pray but if you have never prayed in your life before i want you to stretch your right hand the right hand of god is power and begin to release warfare prayers over these requests we are commanding them to become testimonies overnight miracles the lord that turned again the captivity of zion is going to turn again someone's captivity man of god please let's come together stretch our hands towards it declare harakosia katabara shambras kaparanda prakata empress kepereketos kaparakataka saparakata barakata barakata sapalakate braskata eskaparakata talaba saparakata ne eparakatas let God arise let his enemies be scattered let God arise let his enemies be scattered let God arise let his enemies be scattered let these Egyptians be rolled away let requests be converted to testimonies let families be saved let individuals be be, be listed let there be breakthroughs upon breakthroughs miracle jobs miracle opportunities supernatural lifts in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ Abala kosikaba Karakaba sikotoro bodo sete Ambrakata karakasia kata Ambarakata de sotere bodo The God that answers by fire Let him be God Over this request Let him answer again The God that produces rain In a time of famine Let that God arise on your behalf Arise for the family Arise in that situation Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I want to pray. We can do let's do something please please sir i don't mind if you don't mind you can just stay a little let's just do something i want to pray i want to pray for us i just sense an anointing moving now i'm going to pray different prayers now there will be deliverances there will be healings almost instantly and then after that i'm going to give him to speak over the request and prophesy over it and then we'll round up for the night please lift your hands there is a sweet Anointing in the sanctuary There is a stillness In the atmosphere Oh come lay down All the burdens you have carried For in the sanctuary Lord 
please lift your hands father i pray for your children right now spread across this room and following online you said that it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the Assyrian will be taken. I sense an anointing of deliverance moving in this place now. I sense an anointing. Yokes are being broken now. That the burden will be lifted from his shoulder and the yoke from his neck. And the yoke destroyed because of the anointing. And we stand by the power of the anointing in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has been under any kind of satanic yoke any kind of demonic oppression no matter how long i stand in the authority that is in christ jesus i challenge those forces and i command those yokes to be broken i command those yokes to be destroyed by the power of the anointing that comes upon you now i declare tonight is a night of exodus be free now be free now be free now be free now every chain of delay every chain of stagnation that has held families here or online every chain that has kept you perpetually in one path kabarako sapata he said to say to the prisoners, go forth, and them that sit in darkness, show yourself. Uh, I, I sense that, please help them. I see people running their mouth now. I command those chains to be broken now. I open those prison doors now. I open those prison doors now. I open those prison doors now. Be free now. Be free now. The Lord is telling me to pray against family affliction. Whatever kind of affliction, whatever kind of pattern that is, is, is constant with your family, family is about to be set free. Touch your symbols for me. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died and defeated hell and the grave, and took the keys of hell and death, and rose on the third day, every form of family affliction here every family held on the clutches of darkness i break those afflictions now listen i just i sense the anointing coming on someone i just heard a shout from two people i just heard a shout there are two families that God is deliberately delivering now as a matter of emergency. But in the name of Jesus Christ, listen to me. Every spirit that is responsible for the affliction, the pattern, the limitation over families, I challenge those spirits now. I challenge those altars by fire. I call on the God that answers by fire. And I command the spirit, let them loose. Let help them, let them loose. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Every strong man standing over families here from any region of the nation that you come from, every strong man or woman, every human principality positioned by satan in your family in your territory where you come from i call on the god of vengeance that rides the cherubims i declare and declare let those strong men go down now by the god of vengeance let those strong men be arrested now i arrest them now i arrest them now that's it. Just help them, please. Just help them. I'm about to pray for the sick. But there's this thing called the spirit of affliction. The spirit of infirmity. He said the woman was bound 18 years by a devil. I want to pray for families here. Falling sick here and there is over. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me every altar every priesthood 
that legitimizes any affliction in your family any covenant that has given access to i see a lot of people going on under the anointing just help them every covenant that has given demonic access and has brought affliction to your family i stand by the god of elijah in the name of jesus let those covenants be cancelled let those altars be destroyed i command the spirit of affliction go now go now go now go now go now there are spirits that steal the resources and the finances of family you gather but you don't keep you gather but you don't know what to use with it and it's a pattern in your life and amongst your siblings or amongst your cousin but in the name of he that has the key of david that opens the door and no man shut and shut and no man opens i confront those spirits every mischievous demonic spirit hanging over the finances of your family i put fire under them now i set fire under them now and i command them to let your finances go let your resources go and i release your resources now i release your finances now in the name of jesus I curse the spirit of poverty. I say it again. I curse the spirit of poverty. Listen, there is a combination of graces this night. And I'm standing by that combination of the apostolic and the prophetic. That demon of poverty that has been launched over your lineage. It now looks like it's transgenerational. I arrest that spirit by fire. He said, fire goes from before him and burns his enemies on every side. I arrest that spirit by fire. And from today, everything that the thief has stolen from your life, I command a sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are sick, lay your hands where the sickness is. Just lay your hands. If you are standing in for someone, just stand in for them. If you can call them and put the phone hanging. We are going to pray now. In the next 10 seconds, we are going to pray. You sent your word and healed. about to pray the anointing is here the Lord is showing me before I pray now that there are seven people that the healing anointing will rest upon mightily I just felt that heat now while we started singing and as I pray it will come on those seven people but now in the name of Jesus Christ I invoke the power of the stripes of Jesus for he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed i stand in the name of jesus and i command every devil of infirmity to leave your body now let every spirit of infirmity leave your body now Cast the spirit of infirmity now. And in the name of Jesus Christ, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, be healed. Be healed of every disease, every sickness, every infirmity. Listen, there's an anointing for infections. Anyone struggling with any kind of infection, whether it's a skin condition, in a private area in your body wherever as long as it's an infection by that healing anointing that is in this place i command that infection to dry up from your body now 
I command it to be dried up now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody here. I don't know if he's here or online. With, a, with an unusual blood condition. An unusual blood condition. It has to do with blood from your body. Not blood in your body. It has to do with blood coming from your body. It's an unusual blood condition that you have noticed. But right now I stretch my right hand. And I declare that the Lord heals you. And that demon departs from your life forever. In the name of Jesus. I come against every form of headache. And in the name of Jesus, headache be gone. Headaches be gone. Headaches be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every blinding spirit come out of your eyes. Come out of your eyes. And let every eye condition be healed now. You know the weather has changed. And so there are people with all kinds of cold and flu and everything. But how about we see an instant miracle happening now. Anyone that is here with cold, kata, cough. Just lay your hands either on your chest or on your nose. There's going to be miracles, instant miracles now. Now it will go. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. God is healing. God is healing. I stand by the power in the name of Jesus. And by the miraculous, I declare, let that disease live right now. Let that disease live right now. I arrest every condition caused by cold, every condition of flu, every condition of Qatar, cough. I arrest it now. And I declare instant miracles now. Instant miracles now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of asthma, depart from their bodies. Depart from their lungs. In the name of Jesus. When I came in here today, I heard arthritis. I want to pray against that spirit of arthritis. Anyone with any form of arthritic condition, whether in your hands or in your feet or your legs, in the name of Jesus, by the power that brought the dry bones back to life, I declare an instant miracle in your bones. An instant miracle in your bones. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody, con there's somebody here. And there's someone connected to you that I see God healing of bone cancer. That's what I saw. Bone cancer. Bone cancer. Is there a difference between bone cancer and leukemia? I heard both names. I had leukemia and I had bone cancer. In the name of Jesus, we cause those diseases now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is on a sick bed right now, by the life that rose Jesus from the grave, we command them to rise up now. We command them to rise up from that bed. We command them to rise up now. And we speak to every disease condition. Be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands together and give the Lord praise. Amen. Now listen. I'm going to call Pastor Mediflos. He's going to pray and stretch his hands. And declare over this request. And prophesy as the Lord leads him to. And then I will just round it up. If you are tired, you can sit down. But if you feel the anointing in this place, you can keep standing. God is still touching people. Those of you that were sick, you can go ahead and check your body right now. But I'm going to call him to prophesy. And then we are going to shut down this out of the service. And that will be all for tonight. Are we ready together? Angels are about to be released by a prophet. He brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Please stretch your right hand towards this pulpit. Just stretch your right hand in agreement. Please, sir. You can go ahead. Arise, shine. The light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Oh, your eyes are Lord, 
Pastor, while you were speaking, I sang that song because the Lord said there are two issues here. A, num- a good number of you have the issue with fear. The God has given you a word. He has given you an idea. He has given you a business plan. You know what you should do to step into your breakthrough. But fear. 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 Fear has kept you in one place. Secondly, the second issue I saw was delay. Sometimes you're about to step into your breakthrough. A demon spirit comes in your dream and makes love to you. And you go back to the beginning. Delay. As a matter of fact, some of you, this, some of these prayer points, you've written it over and over and over and over. It looks like it's delay. I have the anointing to break it. Amen. Because at some point in time in my life, it looked like nothing was happening. Mm. Mm. For close to a decade. Mm. For close to a decade. Mm. I was experiencing some demonic attacks. Mm. Back to back. They come, they press you in the night. You think it's ordinary pressing. They took five years of your life. They come, they make love to you while you are sleeping in your dream. You think it's ordinary. They took ten years of your life. These things are demonic influences. And God told me while you were speaking, sir, that this night, delay is over. Amen. Tonight, we are turning fear to faith. Amen. Amen. And as we pray and decree over this prayer point, something happened when Peter was locked up in the prison. Prayer was made and he was released. But only Peter was released. But when Paul and Silas were locked up, praise was raised. Everybody was released because all the gates opened. It's a mystery. God told me this morning. He said praise was raised. All the gates were opened for Paul and Silas. But for Peter, prayer was made. An angel walked there and took him. In your prayer now, this night, we are going to take like five minutes to raise a praise to God. When you pray, he says he inhabits the praises of his people. When you praise God, God has no choice than to exist. Because it is in your praise he exists. But when you pray, he releases an angel. I don't know which one you want. But I would suggest you lift a prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. This night. Hallelujah. Can we do that? Open your mouth and give God praise. Arise, shine, your light is come, and the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord is risen. Oh, oh. Would you arise and shine? Arise, shine, your light is come, and the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord. Speak to it. Arise and shine. Eko perega zika, e bori kapa, e bori kapa, e roskete, e kedi kapa. Ako peke, ako peke, ako peke. Teri ala kaya, e koskete, e koskete. Arise and shine. Shine the light is there. And the glory of the Lord. I heard I heard automobile I don't know who is who is into automobile here Let me Yes come come on celebrate Jesus Yeah 
heard this yesterday. Yes, sir. When we were going to see Colonel. Yes, sir. God said that someone here he wants to raise mm. and is into automobile. Wow. Yes. I was now is he mechanic or is he automobile engineering? Or is he all of the above? Mm. He said when the person comes, he will confirm. So what do you do? Uh, I'm a mechanic, but I studied mechanical engineering. Can you see that? So everything, the two, is in one. Because I had automobile and I had mechanic. Your time has come. Amen. I didn't get I didn't guess. I didn't guess. Did you did you notice he's the only one that raised his hand? It's not a guesswork. There are two, sir. If I was okay, there are two. Is there another person? Yes, okay. It was the first. It was the first. It will reach out to you. You're going to I'm seeing you buying spare parts. I'm seeing you buying spare parts and selling. God is going to place money in your hand, real money. Amen. Amen. Sir, I'm also speaking to you. I see you buying spare parts from one part of the nation to another and importing, and you are doing business. In fact, thank you, Jesus. What can you give God? What can you give God? You need to you need to give God something to provoke. What can you give God? Just stretch your hands towards Him. And stretch your hands towards Him. There are so many destinies tied to you. So many people are feeding from you. Open your mouth and say, Father, release. Release. Let's raise a prayer for him. Raise a prayer. Release. Let every close door be opened. Like light that shines in the darkness. Gates be open, gates be open, gates be open, access to men, access to territories. Risha Bafo Kapara, Bakos Tete, Liba Kapala Jagada, Rebos Sekete, Liba Radas. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. It is done. One, one, so God will give you, tell you what to do. So God is speaking to you now. Amen. There's, I just saw two, there are two people I want to talk to. I want to talk to this woman and the woman that is close to the door there, yeah, you're carrying a child. Just come, please. You're carrying a child. Yes. You're carrying a child. They just brought a notice to me that we have to close, so we can't do much again tonight. But I just saw the Lord and the Lord is telling me there's someone God is talking to me about still on business. Madam, you in front, what do you do? I'm a business lady. You're a business lady. Yeah. Come. What you are doing, does it ha- is it does is it connected to edible things? Yes, I supply eggs. Sir. You supply eggs. Yes, Alright. That there's a grace that God is releasing on you, just like he was prophesying now. I saw a grace being released for you. Yeah. Two things. God is going to expand that business Amen. and give you numerous customers Amen. but there is a grace coming on you to start another line of business Amen. are you hearing what i'm telling you yes, there's a grace coming on you to start another line of business and i don't know but if what i'm seeing is correct i also see that you will soon start to bake cake Amen. like bake Amen. like bake Amen. are you hearing me yes. Can you bake cake now? Um, planning of learning. You are planning to learn that. Yes, sir. That's it. So God is releasing grace. Learn that because He's going to expand you along that line. Amen. Because I saw you mixing something with your hand. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may that anointing to prosper rest upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. This Amen. this woman, please come. Where's your baby? You you gave someone else. Is that your only child? No, she's the second baby. Sir. Is the second? Yes. Oh. Okay, this is your sister. 
Wow. Can I pray for you, ma? Yes, sir. Number one, preservation for you and your two children. Amen. Amen. That the blood of Jesus will barricade around your two children. Amen. You will not have an issue where this one falls sick. And as you are trying to treat this one, this one is sick. Amen. As you are trying to treat this one, we declare preservation. Amen. But right now, it's time for your financial destiny to be open. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, I see you standing in front of a big gate. A gate that is bigger than you. Amen. On the other side of the gate, I see money in different currencies. Amen. But I see that the gate that is standing before you has a padlock around it with chains. And you are not able to access the resources that are at the other side. But I saw God release an angel with a mighty axe. And I saw that gate being broken. Amen. And God says he's releasing to you mega wealth. Amen. That's what he said. Mega wealth. Amen. Wait. Are you doing anything now? No, sir. Good. But in the name of Jesus, that door that has been closed is open now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at me, ma. Please confirm if this is true. But I saw you years ago. This was like you were much younger. Like a teenage girl or something. And I saw that you had this dream. Where you will see yourself. It, it didn't happen once. But you will see yourself counting money. Counting money. And later you see yourself giving money to people. Yes, giving sir. money to people. Yes, sir. You've had those dreams before. Yes. When you were like a teenage girl. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? But this gate that the enemy has placed over your life is like a stronghold over your finance. But from today, it is broken over your life. And you are going to begin to find multiple opportunities. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there is faith God is releasing to you to step into the line of entrepreneurship. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Have you sat down to discuss with him that you have plans to do business have you have you sat down to discuss with him that you have plans but you have plans to do business right good god is giving you faith to get into the line of entrepreneurship all right and when that happens you are going to begin to find major financial breakthroughs on your part and as the, the breakthrough comes for you it's coming for your entire family in the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and give God praise. Is, is, is anybody called Ayomide here? Since, uh, since morning I've been hearing that name in my ears. Is anybody called Ayomide? Maybe he's connected to or someone. Or you, he's connected to you. You, have, you know someone close to you who has that name. The Lord said the person is going to work for God. Ma- massively, that's it. Amen. Who is it? Who is the person? Your younger brother. Your younger brother. What's his bed position in your family? What's his bed position? Number what? Number three. Third position. He's the third. So do you know what the three, the third person in the family is? Yeah. He's the priest of your family. He's going to work for God like never before. <laughs> Since morning, that name has troubled me. I your me When you go home, speak prophetically to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we wave our hands and give the Lord praise? And I prophesy on that. That anyone that is in your family that has been picked by God to serve him. And he's been strayed away or is not serious with God. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost arrest them this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Not tomorrow, I said tonight. The anointing of the Holy Ghost will arrest them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So is God speaking to any, any other person? I told you this is a prophet. So I think you believe me now, right? Can we put our hands together and give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. <laughs> hey. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, yeah. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah, oh. Let the sound say, let the sound of rejoicing fill the 
Listen, I wish we had all the time. Listen, I know. Just hold on, small. I know, I know. One thing I know with this man of God is he has a grace of personal prophecy. If he goes down, he can go one by one on every row and prophesy to everybody. But they just brought notice to me that we should close. Amen. So we have to close. But I assure you, when we have our own facility, there will be buses for those who need to go home. And those who are ready to say, if it is all night, it is all right. Will remain. Do you understand what I'm saying? Robert. Yes, you. Can I ask you to do something? Huh? I hope you are not shy of, pub of the public. I want you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. That's the anointing for breakthrough that is coming on you Amen. and on your family Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. I see God opening doors and opening the heavens for two people, two of your siblings. Watch what I'm going to describe. Two. All right? Yes, sir. I'm seeing one before you and I'm seeing one behind you. Are you the firstborn? Yes, sir. You are the first. Yes, sir. I'm seeing one before you. I'm seeing one behind you. But God is concerned about the one that I'm seeing this is like a younger brother as it were and I'm seeing somebody that does something with the hand like handwork like skill or something and the Lord said when you shouted that Jesus the heavens were opened over his life Amen. and he's going to begin to record numerous financial breakthroughs henceforth Amen. are you hearing what I'm saying yes sir did your mother give birth to someone who passed away before you do Not you know of know. any miscarriage or something before you? Several miscarriages after before me. you. No, after me. Oh, after you. Yes. But you don't know of before you. I'm not that I know of. Now let me pray and rebuke that demon of miscarriages, because if we don't, you when you get married and the ladies in the family is going to the same thing will play out. But in the name of Jesus, we rebuke that spirit. Amen. We rebuke that spirit now. Amen. And we release the destinies of men and women in your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you believe that God has answered us today? Can you put that hands together, those hands together and give God praise? Amen. Thank you very much, man of God. Thank you for coming to Meduguri at this time. Thank you for being a blessing. Please let's celebrate him. Amen. Amen. Now before we close, if you are here and you've not given your life to Christ, please just stand. We are closing in a minute. If you are here and you've not given your life to Christ, I want to give this opportunity while we all stand. We can't leave this place without having... We can't leave this place without having someone who will make a decision for Jesus. Ushers, you know what to do at this point. If you are here and you have not said yes to Jesus, possibly you were invited or you have been coming to church and you have not said yes to Jesus, please all stand in no movement anywhere until this is over. I want to give you an opportunity. Or you are here and you know that your ways with God are not straight. You want to rededicate your life. You feel like you are lost. It's time for you to return back. Wherever you are, I want you to put up your right hand. And we are going to pray for you very briefly. If you are here and you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus. Or you need to rededicate your life. Please everybody stand if you can. We are closing now. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Alright. There is joy in heaven not when miracles happen. But when one soul is saved. 
I want to give this opportunity in the next 30 seconds if you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus or perhaps you used to be a believer but you can't call what you have with God a walk with God I want you to make up your mind to rededicate your life to Christ raise your right hand where you are and I'm going to pray for you let's know if there are any amongst us here and we are going to pray for them just raise your right hand and we are going to pray for you say yes to Jesus while you can still raise your right hand if you are raising